welcome to Ruth Reads. My name is Ruth Van Der Zee, and I, today I'm going to be reading one of my stories. To understand my stories, you have to understand that throughout history, a lot of people made a lot of decisions. And some of them were good, and some of them were not good. But all those decisions affected children in some way or another. And the reason I like my stories so much is that my stories happened to real life people. And along the way, they told me their stories. They trusted me to tell me a lot about their story. And they told me that I could tell you. So what amazes me is that they went through so many difficult experiences but they all came out the other end with hope and strength and courage. Along the way, they asked a lot of hard questions. They wondered why things happened to them and they had to figure a lot out. But one thing for sure is when they told me their stories, they touched my heart and I was inspired and I hope their stories inspire you. Today we're going to read Always With You, written by Ruth Vanderzee, illustrated by Ronald Himmler, and published by Erdman's Books for Young Readers. Always With You is, about, is a story about this lady. But this lady has her son standing next to her who helps her uh, get around because she has practically no vision at all. And that happened because when she was four years old, living in Vietnam, during the Vietnam War, something very difficult happened to her. She told me her story, and now I would like to read her story to you. This story is written in first person. It's as if Kim is telling you her story herself. Kim, come to me. Don't be afraid. I will always be with you. Those are the only words I remember my mama saying to me. Three short sentences. But I guess you remember words that are whispered at the bottom of a bombed-out crater where once your house stood when you were four years old, when you were alone. That day, Mama sent me to play under the umbrella of green coconut palms just outside my village. A few moments later, the earth shook the golden straw houses of my village exploded into orange clouds of fire. When I finally dared crawl to where my mama might be, I thought I heard my name. I almost missed her words. Kim, come to me. I slid down into the deepness of a hole where my house had been. Mama held me close and whispered, Don't be afraid. Then she laid her hand on my head like a blessing, breathing her last words, I will always be with you. I was alone, all alone on that day that fiery day in my village in Vietnam. Angry sounds tumbled shout after shout into my not knowing what to do. I heard, there's one left alive, and then felt the butt of a gun crack across the back of my head on that day, that blackout day in my village in Vietnam. The soldier thought I was dead, but I wasn't. I don't know how long I lay there, but when I woke, 
Everything was hazy. There were no colors, nor have there ever been since that day. I was thirsty, real thirsty. My body hurt, my head throbbed on that day, that gray day in my village in Vietnam. In my mind, I heard my mama saying, don't be afraid, Kim. I will always be with you. Then other sounds tumbled word after word into my not knowing what to do. Kind words I did not understand from men I could not see. I did not know them, but I did not fear them. They carried me to their noisy machine and gave me sips of water. They said, here, Kim, gum. I chewed and chewed and chewed the gum sweetness. It tasted like silvery sparklers in my mouth. Long after the sweetness was gone, I was still chewing. The gum would not go away. I thought to myself, I will keep this gum forever. I traveled with the soldiers for several days. They made a soft bed for me. I felt stronger. But when I rubbed my eyes, the world still didn't become clear. At night, the darkness was darker than the gray of my day. The soldiers said orphanage and China Beach. I did not know those words, but one day they brought me to a place that would be my home for the next five years. They brought me to Ong and Ba Jones, whose love helped me and hundreds of other children feel safe. Their hearts must have been as big as barrels and filled with every color of the rainbow. I went to school. I perched on a bench at a table on the front porch of the orphanage. Cool breezes fanned our sunbright faces. I could not see, but my best friend Vin helped me learn. After school, I would make my way to the sandy beach where Vin and I splashed in the water. We'd sing, Bluebird, Bluebird, in and out the window. Oh, Johnny, I am tired. We'd shout, Hey, Bluebird, are you tired yet? Our answer was always, Not yet. During the day, Vin and I were two bluebirds playing our bluebird games. At night, I cried for my mama. Ong or Ba would come when they heard me crying. They would sit next to me on my bed. Kim, we can't bring your mama back to you, but you are safe here. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. My mama's words. I spoke those words to my first baby doll, who arrived in a wooden crate from a faraway place. I kissed her soft face, held her close to me, laid my hand on her head like a blessing and said, Don't be afraid. I will always be with you. I imagined her brown eyes full of light, smiling at me. I don't know how I felt safe when I was five and six and seven and eight and nine years old, but I did. How do you feel full when there is not enough food to eat? When the rice and fish and hot pepper sauce are gone and you suck on buttons. How do you feel sheltered when you are memorizing, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, and bombs are exploding in the distance? How do you feel secure when the dreams of your mama disappear 
in the dawn of the day, when you realize your only family is two loving people and hundreds of brother and sister orphans. How do you see color in spite of the hazy gray? I hear my mama's words. I will always be with you. I feel her hand on my head like a blessing. And I am not afraid. The End Author's note, Always With You is based on a true story. Kim now lives with her family in a suburb of Chicago, Illinois. She is still only able to see hazy images. From age four to age nine, Kim lived in the China Beach Orphanage in Da Nang, Vietnam. Because of her vision problems, Kim was sent to the United States for eye surgery. After the surgery, she returned to Vietnam. However, when one of her eyes became infected and she required more surgery, the doctors insisted that Kim stay in the United States. She was then placed in foster care. Later, she was adopted into a family. The Vietnam War, 1959 to 1975, was a civil war between North Vietnam the Viet Cong, and South Vietnam, the Democratic Republic of Vietnam. In the 1950s, the United States began assisting the South Vietnamese to keep the communist influence of North Vietnam under control. In 1964, the United States officially became part of the war. For the next nine years, more than two million United States soldiers fought along with the South Vietnamese. More than 50,000 American soldiers lost their lives while hundreds of thousands of Vietnamese were killed during the war. Historians estimate that the number of children orphaned by the Vietnam War ranges between 300,000 and 800,000. In 1975, President Ford declared the war finished. Thank you. Thanks for visiting Ruth Reads. All my books are based on critical social issues and are great for curriculum use. If you have any questions that arose as I was reading the book, or if you have any curriculum guide needs, please visit my website at www.ruthvanderzee.com. You can find all my information there and you can contact me. It will also be linked in the description box below. Please like and subscribe to this video. That would be so nice if you do that. You can purchase my books at any independent local bookstore or at amazon.com. And I have to give a shout out to my awesome producer, He'll say Vanderzee. Thanks for visiting. See you soon.